Have you ever wanted to time travel? Maybe you've dreamt of standing at the foot of the Great Pyramids as they were being built, or watching as the first humans discovered fire. Now, what if you could travel even further back, millions of years, to witness the Earth in its most primal state? Sounds incredible, right? But here's the thing. What if this seemingly magical journey turned into your worst nightmare? What if you landed in a time when survival was nearly impossible? But what is the worst period to time travel to? Why would survival be nearly impossible? And why should you never, ever visit 150 million years ago? Stay with us to find out, because what you're about to discover may change the way you think about time travel forever. First things first. Yes, dinosaurs are cool. No denying that. But if you've ever fantasized about walking among them, let me burst that bubble right away. The late Jurassic period wasn't some prehistoric zoo where you could just stroll around and safely observe massive creatures from behind glass. It was a planet-sized death trap. This was a time when both the environment and the animals roaming the Earth were extremely hostile, and survival for even a day would be an incredible challenge. Let's begin by setting the stage. Earth, 150 million years ago, was a very different place. The supercontinent Pangaea had begun to split, and the land masses we recognize today were slowly drifting apart. This created immense tectonic activity. Massive earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and geological instability were all part of the late Jurassic landscape. It was a world in constant flux, with mountains erupting from the ground, oceans expanding, and the air itself becoming hotter and more humid. In other words, the Earth was transforming before your very eyes, and not in a good way. Now, if you were stepping out of your time machine into this world, you'd be in for a shock. Before you even encounter the giant beasts we associate with the Jurassic, you'd feel the oppressive atmosphere weighing down on you. The air was thicker back then, with much higher levels of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Breathing would be harder, almost suffocating, especially for us modern humans who are used to today's relatively mild environment. On top of that, the Earth was way warmer than it is now. Forget about finding any ice caps or snowy regions to cool down. With no polar ice caps to regulate the Earth's climate, global temperatures soared, creating a greenhouse world where the heat was inescapable. You'd be sweating, just standing still. And with those volcanic eruptions constantly spewing toxic gases, the air quality would make it even harder to survive. Sea levels were also much higher than they are today. Vast stretches of what's now land were submerged beneath the shallow, warm seas. So if you thought about finding refuge near the coast or taking a swim, think again. These seas weren't filled with friendly fish and dolphins. They were hunting grounds for some of the most terrifying marine predators to ever exist. Speaking of predators, let's get to the stars of the late Jurassic, the dinosaurs. These weren't the harmless, slow-moving giants you might imagine. No, this was a golden age for some of the most fearsome creatures to ever walk the earth, and they were everywhere. Take the Allosaurus, for example. This 28-foot-long, 1.7-ton predator was one of the most terrifying creatures of the time. It had razor-sharp teeth designed for slashing through the flesh of its prey. And it wasn't just the size that was the problem. This predator was fast, and there's evidence to suggest it hunted in packs. So even if you managed to outrun one Allosaurus, a whole group of them would be right behind, closing in fast. What if you were running through thick, humid forests with the earth trembling under your feet as a pack of allosaurs closes the gap. Not a comfortable thought, right? But that's just the beginning. If the allosaurus doesn't get you, maybe its bigger, meaner cousin, Sorophaganax, will. This predator was even larger, weighing up to 5 tons and measuring over 40 feet long. It was the apex predator of its time, and you wouldn't stand a chance. There are no weapons, no shelters, no place to hide from something like that. Even if you somehow managed to avoid these massive carnivores, the herbivores weren't exactly friendly either. Stegosaurus, one of the most recognizable dinosaurs with its back plates and spiked tail, could be just as dangerous. Weighing over five and a half tons, a single swing of its tail, armed with sharp spikes, could kill a human instantly. 
Ankylosaurs, the walking tanks of the Jurassic period, were so heavily armored that even predators had a tough time taking them down. Their club tails were capable of shattering bones. And if you were unfortunate enough to get too close, you'd find out just how deadly these plant eaters could be. And let's not forget the skies. Pterosaurs, flying reptiles that ruled the Jurassic skies, would have made even looking up a terrifying experience. Some species had wingspans of up to 12 feet, and while many of them fed on flesh, their sheer size and sharp beaks made them formidable predators. Just think of one of these winged beasts swooping down, mistaking you for prey. There's no outrunning something that can fly faster than you can sprint. Perhaps the most terrifying thing about the Jurassic skies is that there was nowhere to hide. Whether on the ground or in the trees, you'd be vulnerable to attacks from above. These pterosaurs weren't gentle giants gliding peacefully through the air. They were hunters. And in the late Jurassic, it was the survival of the fittest. And you, my friend, are far from fit in this world. But what if you took your chances in the water? Surely the ocean would offer some sort of refuge, right? Absolutely not. If the land-based predators didn't get you, the sea certainly would. The late Jurassic Oceans were teeming with predators far more dangerous than anything we have today. Pliosaurs ruled the seas. These massive marine reptiles could grow up to 33 feet long, and their powerful jaws were equipped with teeth designed to rip apart anything that crossed their path. Pliosaurs were apex predators, which means they had no natural enemies and ate anything they wanted. If you were swimming in the ocean and one of these monsters spotted you, your fate would be sealed. But pliosaurs weren't the only threat in the water. The seas were also home to mosasaurs, another terrifying marine reptile, and plesiosaurs, creatures with long necks and sharp teeth. These predators ruled the Jurassic Oceans, and their sheer size and speed made them impossible to escape from. And if that wasn't bad enough, there were also giant prehistoric sharks and even larger aquatic reptiles lurking in the depths. These oceans weren't the tropical paradises you might imagine. They were death traps, filled with creatures that could swallow a human whole without a second thought. Now, let's talk about the Earth itself. As if the dinosaurs and marine predators weren't bad enough, the planet itself was trying to kill you. Massive volcanic eruptions were common, spewing toxic gases into the air and causing wildfires, earthquakes, and tsunamis. Earthquakes would shake the ground beneath your feet, making it hard to stay on your feet, let alone find shelter. The skies would be filled with ash and smoke, darkening the sun and making it even harder to breathe. The late Jurassic period was also a time of extreme weather. With high levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, global temperatures were significantly higher than they are today. This wasn't just uncomfortable, it was deadly. Heat waves, thunderstorms, and wildfires were common, and there was no escaping the extreme climate. You'd be struggling to stay cool, find fresh water, and avoid natural disasters, all while trying to avoid being eaten by a dinosaur. The lack of resources would also be a major problem. No clean drinking water, no food that you'd recognize or be able to safely eat, and no medicines to treat injuries or infections. Even a small cut could become life-threatening in this environment. There were no doctors, no hospitals, and no way to treat the diseases that would inevitably develop in such a hostile environment. So let's be real here. Could you survive in the late Jurassic period? The odds are pretty slim. The environment alone would make it difficult to stay alive, with its toxic atmosphere, extreme heat, and frequent natural disasters. But add in the constant threat of predatory dinosaurs, dangerous marine reptiles, and flying terrors in the sky... And you're looking at a nightmare scenario where every day is a fight for survival. Even if you somehow manage to avoid the predators and natural disasters, finding food and water would be next to impossible. The plants of the Jurassic period weren't the crops and fruits we rely on today. Most of the vegetation consisted of ferns, conifers, and other gymnosperms, none of which are edible for humans. So, while the dinosaurs had plenty to eat, you'd be left to starve. There's also the matter of diseases. With no modern medicine, any small injury or illness could quickly turn deadly. The heat, humidity, and lack of clean water would make you vulnerable to infections and diseases that modern humans simply aren't equipped to handle. So, would you still consider traveling back to the Jurassic? Probably not. The late Jurassic period, while fascinating to study, 
was a hostile world where survival was nearly impossible. From the environment itself to the terrifying creatures that ruled the land, sky, and sea, there's no question that it's the worst period to visit in all of Earth's history. If you enjoyed this journey through time, be sure to click on the next video for more prehistoric adventures. And let us know in the comments, what time period would you travel to?